My guest today is Arthur Doler. Arthur, how you doing? Doing all right. How about you? I'm doing really well. I'm so excited to be back here at an actual conference with yeah, actual no people at, uh, at Code Mesh. Yeah. It's, I'm excited. It's been two years. Um, tell me, you did a workshop uh, yesterday, I think. Mm -hmm. And it, it involved Legos, but it really wasn't about the Legos. They were just kind of a, <laughs> a prop to get another message across. What were you, what were you trying to talk about? Um, so I was talking about feedback, uh -huh. which sounds like it's a really broad topic. Um, there was a speaker have a, uh, who gave a talk earlier today about uh, leveling up as a senior, like to be a senior engineer, and okay. she made the comment, she doesn't use the word feedback because it's so vague that yeah. Speaker, it doesn't mean speaker anything. feedback to me means that sound when you get too close. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, and so I'm an engineer uh, yeah. by training, and that makes me, one, it makes me a huge nerd, but two, <laughs> uh, it, I tend to think of feedback as a little bit of the output coming back to the input, right? That's the core of like process engineering feedback. Um, okay. And so what feedback is in, you know, in a software sense is, well, one, you, what your program does is feedback, right? Okay. But inputs and outputs, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you know when you run a thing and the test fails, that's feedback too. The context of what we're actually talking about is human feedback, right? right. When you need to offer feedback to a colleague, to a, someone you're mentoring, to someone who's your, you know, you're a, the boss of them, or mm -hmm. you need to receive feedback or offer feedback to your boss. Someone that, that is pretty boring. Is it? Is, are we talking about like evaluations, like when my boss tells me that I'm doing a great job or that I need to improve in some areas? Is that what you're talking about? It is. It's part of what we're talking about. Um, really, feedback gets used whenever you're trying to change somebody's behavior. Okay. Uh, it also gets used in ways to demonstrate that they're, you appreciate them, that you are happy they're part of your team. Um, but in that way, it's also that's partially to change behavior as well, right? right? You want to, or encourage behavior. You want to say, keep it up, you're doing great, this is awesome. Right. All of those are things you can say. Um, so in that sense, feedback is generally deployed. Like it's to modify behavior or to approve of the behavior that exists. That evaluations are part of that, uh, although they have other ulterior motives most of the time. In yeah, the sense that there may be some rewards behind that, for example. Right, um, but they're also you know they're also there for the company to cover their butts, et cetera, and mm. a bunch of other reasons. Right. But so the workshop is about managing and primarily about receiving feedback because a lot of the people when they talk about feedback and you know manager training for feedback, et cetera, they talk a lot about how to give feedback, how to make people receive your feedback, how to take the feedback, and it's really just kind of like you just keep shoving feedback at people and eventually maybe they'll get it. Hmm. And that doesn't work very well. Yeah, because you know, because communication is a two-way street. I have, right. I have to deliver it and you have to receive it and the message can get distorted along the way. Right, and so they'll offer you those techniques that you've heard about like, um, pardon the curse, but like the shoot sandwich, right? The shit sandwich, okay. uh, where you offer feedback and it's like, well, you know, you're doing a really good job, but I really Nobody's wouldn't. ever cursed on the show before, except for <laughs> Jennifer Wadella. Really? <laughs> I can't believe that. Uh, I can but, believe that Jennifer definitely <laughs> would, but I can't believe nobody else has. Uh, but, it, you know, that, that you're offering that, hey, you're doing a really good job, but if you could just make sure you fill out the, you know, t cover sheet on your TPS report, but keep up the good work, right? That... <laughs> that's, we, we offer that as supposed to be a good thing, but that's a nightmare. Because yeah. what ends up happening is, well, let's break it down. There are two kinds of things occurring in that statement. And the first is the type of feedback called appreciation, okay. where you're offering somebody, hey, you, uh, appreciation for their work, you're acknowledging that they're part of the team, you're helping them feel like they're included, like they belong. And appreciation feedback has to be three things. One, it has to be sincere. Yep. It has to be specific in the sense that it has to be about something in general. Yeah, if I They'd, say, great job, a boy, keep it up, that's not enough. No, it's not very, sounds, I mean. It sounds insincere. It, well, even if it is sincere, like you are really doing a great job. If you're not, if you don't know what it is I'm doing a great job at, it doesn't really yeah, feel yeah, very no, genuine, that, right? Boy, that, that uh, code you wrote that, uh, or that hour you spent mentoring me, boy, that saved me days. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Right. That's that's good feedback. I tell this, my company does shout outs at an all hand meeting and every time people give shout outs, I'm like, you've got to be specific. Yeah. What did they do that merited that? You can't right. just be like, they've been- They work really hard. 
that's not that nobody yeah. listens to that. And then the third thing is it has to be in a form that they understand and appreciate. Um, mm. The example I tend to use is if somebody really hates being up in front of crowds. Ah. Uh, obviously, none of the speakers, but uh, uh, you know, you know there are people that are right. Some people have to get over that. It, uh, uh, it's a challenge for some of us. Yeah, me included, really, but. You know, people who just absolutely hit terrified being the focus of attention for whatever reason. Uh, you don't want to pull them up in that's, front of them. That's an all a, not a reward. That's a punishment. Right. You pull them up in front of them in all hands, and it's like, you did great. That's not a yeah. form that they understand and appreciate. Yeah. So in the, the shoot sandwich, you're offering appreciation feedback, but then you're immediately following it with coaching feedback. And coaching feedback is feedback that is used to change behavior okay. uh, or, you know, help somebody level up at a skill or change it, be better at a skill or to change the relationship between you two. Okay. So uh, you can use coaching feedback to do things like if you, you can offer your boss coaching feedback about how to offer you feedback, which is kind of kind of meta. weirdly yeah. meta, but it works. Right? Like it, I really appreciate it better more if you like or the person, you know, who's doesn't like being called up. It's like, I really don't appreciate that. If yeah. you could in the future just thank me in private, yeah. I would love it a lot more. Yeah. That's coaching feedback about appreciation feedback. Yeah. Cash would be better. <laughs> it, that's <laughs> Honestly, it's an uh, example I use in the workshop. My favorite example of appreciation feedback was when somebody, uh, a project manager walked up, dropped a bottle of my favorite scotch on my desk and walked away. Simon nice. did not say a word. And I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> right? Like, thank you. That's amazing. But it he, it was in a form I, like, he knew, he'd asked, I thought he was just making a conversation. He's like, what's kind of scotch do you like? I'm like, I eh, tend to like Eisleys and was discussing, like, Lefroig. Uh And he bought a bottle of 10-year-old Lefroig, which is not super expensive. I'm not but, a really scotch guy, but some of our viewers will probably send you yeah. some scotch, I'm sure. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, and he, so he, you know, he did, he bought something and that he knew I enjoyed, and he it was it's sincere. It was in a form I was uh, pleased to receive. So in the shoot sandwich, you're following that up again, the coaching feedback. You know, you want somebody to change their behavior with more appreciation. And really what happens is that feedback has different volumes. Coaching feedback is louder than appreciation feedback. And what happens in that sandwich is the coaching feedback drowns out the appreciation feedback. They almost don't oh, hear it. So when you say it's louder, you mean that it's heard at a louder Correct. volume. Correct. Your maybe, brain focuses on that. You may spend that. as much time on each. You may say at the same volume, but they absorb exactly coaching feedback more than they absorb the Exactly. Other. And so what happens is, eventually, over time, people who are your employees learn to, when they hear appreciation feedback, they brace for the hit. Mm, yeah, yeah. Even if you're just only offering appreciation, it means they're, you can no longer use that, that as a tool. Shoot it up. Right. The last form of feedback is coaching fee or excuse me, evaluation feedback. And that's very flat. Like it's like the when you get a performance review and you get like a scoring, yeah. that's evaluation. It isn't um, usually the paragraph under it is not always evaluation, but the score itself, the okay. you know, you were the top performer in the sales category this year, that's evaluation feedback. Right. And evaluation feedback is the loudest feedback of all. So typically in a normal performance review, you pull an employee in, set them down, you hand them the eval and so they can skim it, yeah. and then you want to do coaching with them to help right. them improve in places, et cetera. That's not gonna work because their brain is chewing on the evaluation. Hmm. That's right then, they're, that's all they're listening to in their head. Hmm. And so you are offering coaching and they're elsewhere. Right. So that's kind of the three pieces that we start talking about in this workshop. Um, and how to you know, use and deploy those. And then we also start talking about labels, which is a fascinating thing. So without getting too deep into the computational theory of the brain, because uh, we'll be here all day if we get into that, but your brain tends to think of things in terms of symbols, right? So if you think of fruit, okay, what's the fruit that popped into your head? Apple. Right. So that's the representative. Actually, that's, that's the most common. All right. It's that and like banana second, which is really weird. It's I would a have Freudian thought it, thing. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but... Right, so you think of fruit and you think of a specific example of a fruit. That's the canonical example in your okay. head. But fruit represents an entire category. So fruit is then related to things like fruit salad, to um, fruit ninja. I'm fruit loops. Friendly. Fruit loops, <laughs> only vaguely. But, um, right, it's your, your brain associates categories with, okay. this, with other categories. And so you can get this whole mesh of things. But what the, the fact that it's a category means is that your concept of fruit 
is actually different from my concept of fruit. Hmm. Because those things don't, we don't born with those, right? You can't ask like a two year old what fruit is. Right. They're not gonna understand. Right. Uh, See, so it builds up over time in their head based on their experience in the world and what they've encountered as fruit. Okay. Right, like you can get the, you know, a two, like three year old or somebody who's verbal, like a piece of dragon fruit, they don't understand it's fruit because it's right. not part of their category. So when you offer feedback, it's typically something along the lines of like, be more assertive or I need you to be more conscientious. Okay. Those are labels. Okay. They are yeah. symbols that represent an entire category of thing. Yeah. Oh. So your, your representation of uh, assertiveness may be different from my representation of assertiveness. Exactly. So we may be some disconnect in right. what and, you say and what I hear. Right. And so what happens is if you say that and I hear it, I'm like, okay, I'll be my idea of assertive. That may not be what you intended at all. Uh, okay. And so that you can wind up in this problem where you're performing, you're, you think you're taking the feedback, you think you're doing great. It's like somebody offered me, I'm doing this, you know, yeah. I, I understood it, we're enacting it, this is great, but you're, you're going the wrong direction. So the trick there is to ask people, you know, what do you mean by that? Ah. And start burrowing down because those labels come from an interpretation of data. And that data is what you're really looking for. Because I can't be more assertive. I don't know what that means. Okay. But I can, if I'm like being a salesperson, I can make sure that the client has my card the right. instant they walk on the sales floor. I right. can make sure that they know they can take samples home. Sure. I can make sure that they know there's a 30 day money back guarantee mm -hmm. and they can return, you know. They can ask for the sale. Right. So that's a common assertiveness in salespeople. Exactly. It's giving all the products but never saying, will you buy this? Right. And not. For instance, another interpretation of assertive could be cornering somebody on the sales floor and not really letting them leave until they understand exactly all of those things. Like that's, you right. don't want that, right? right? The hard sell, that's right. the you know, used car salesman kind of thing. But if you don't get back to that data, you don't get back to the behaviors that you want that person to actually do or that that person wants you to do if you're receiving the feedback, then that's when you run into problems. So what I'm hearing is that you, like in the workshop, you're you're trying to coach uh, the people who are giving the feedback to give better feedback and the people who are receiving the feedback to do a better job of receiving it. Because yeah. That, it's a two-way street, right? The exactly. It's really kind of understanding how your brain tends to receive feedback. Okay. Once you understand that, well, not just your brain, but everybody's brain. Right. And once you understand that, that makes you better at giving it because you know kind of how the person's going to end up taking it. Hmm. Not exactly, but you have a better idea of what's going to be going on in there. You have head. a better chance of that communication succeeding. Right. For instance, you can do something like, for, uh, I'm going to deliver you the eval, the eval itself up front yeah. in an email. And then I'm going to schedule as part of that, like two days from now, we're going to actually sit down and talk about it. So they have time to process exactly. what's in that email. It's not getting in the way of the other communication. Exactly. Then they've got time to sit down and they're ready. They've thought through, they've had, you know, all of this argument in their head about it. Hmm. And then they're ready to actually have a conversation with you. It may not be an easy conversation still, right. but at the very least, they're not making up, um, work, busy working on excuses, or not excuses, but reasons in their own head. Because right. that's what the other part of the workshop is, is about triggers. So when you receive feedback, your brain has like these self-defense mechanisms, basically, okay. um, that help it protect itself. And the first one of those is called truth triggers. So exactly. truth triggers. So they're, um, we, your brain tends to look for things that are wrong with the feedback. Like for instance, if your boss is, especially if they're an engineering manager or whatever, they maybe, you know, they don't touch code that often. When was the last time? They don't even know what React is. How can they be offering you feedback about your uh, code? And that helps you to discount any negative feedback you get. Exactly. You just go, hey, this isn't, I don't need to listen to this. What does he know about right. this? On the other hand then, that stops you from, I, phrase I use in the top, uh, the workshop is that feedback is like your vegetables. You really need it. Right. Right? You need it to grow, to be better. Yeah. You, that's the only way to be better is to understand what you're doing wrong. Yeah. Exactly. So everybody has to do the work to get past these truth triggers, to sit back and say, well, okay, what about this statement is right? What about it? You know, maybe he hasn't touched React, but is he right about I need to do something? I need to be more um, clean in my, my Unit tests, etc. I mean, yeah. so That's fair. or maybe the 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 mechanism of his, his delivery is really offensive, mm -hmm. even though the message itself is valid. Yeah, that's true. Delivering in, a, in an insulting way, for example. Right. If somebody's terrible at feedback, that and can then, be uh, a way to discount them. You could discount them. Just he's just a jerk. 
when in fact he's actually giving you some good advice and it could help you if you just yeah. ignored the tone, listened to the message. And that doesn't excuse somebody from doing that, let's be yeah. clear. Uh, but it does. if you're the one receiving that feedback, you need to be ready to uh, deal. I mean, not everybody in the world is good at feedback, so sure. you've got to be ready to deal with it when somebody isn't. And then um, the other two types of triggers are relationship triggers, which are about the when you offer me feedback, if we have a close relationship, which I hope we have a fairly one, uh, really yeah, close I one, so. uh, I tend to think about, well, what is that? If you offered me feedback, what does David think about me? I'm not, I tend to not even pay attention to the feedback because now I'm thinking about what that says about our relationship hmm. Interesting. and not what you actually said. Hmm. And this is like, you see this all the time on sitcoms. This is like the, the core of like the husband wife sitcom <laughs> misunderstanding, right? right? Is not being able to, you know, they're having two different conversations. Right. Uh, at the same time, but they think they're, think they're having a single <laughs> one. Uh, and then the last one is identity triggers, which is about how it feels when somebody offers you feedback on something that is really core to your identity. Oh, yeah. So you see this a lot, actually, with developers in a certain stage of their career. Like, once they make it past junior or they're into mid-level, they start thinking, I've really got, you know, I've got my, my crap together. I'm, I'm really good at this. I'm a good developer. They build that into their identity, right? Especially right. if they've gone through, you know, they've been wanting to code for forever and uh, gone through a four-year program or a code school or something else that was, like, they're really into this and they really enjoy the job. Telling them you're not that great a developer can really cut. Right, yeah. especially when, I mean, oftentimes, let's be honest, developers not always uh, the most gentle at feedback and peer reviews. Uh, some not well, not everybody that's in the developer community and does software for has awesome communication skills like you and me. I I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> But it's true. I mean, so you've got to be able to take that and go, okay, you know, your brain wants to take that. It's like once that feedback makes it past your armor, it tends to affect all of these other parts of you. Right. You tend to think about it yourself and suddenly it becomes like, well. You get really defensive. Right. It becomes, I'm not only, I'm not only a terrible developer, I've always been a terrible developer right. and I'll always be a terrible developer and not even just a terrible developer. I'm a terrible human. <laughs> like, because that's part of who you are. Yeah. Right. It, it just makes it in and it floods into all the other parts of your identity because right. they're so tightly related in your brain. So it starts to, you have to figure out how to sit with those in the moment, either by taking time and going to process or trying to come up with some other way to be more resilient, like having a growth mindset um, or not having a brittle self-identity, mm. not considering yourself, oh, I'm a smart developer. Like right. considering yourself intelligent is very fragile I see. in the sense that it doesn't take many instances of making mistakes to be, I can't be smart because I keep doing dumb things. Wow. And I mean, I don't know about your experience, but my experience is that being a human means doing dumb things. It, it does. And also my experience as a developer means it's a lot of trial and error. Right. And uh, often, usually more error than trial. And that's what we do. We try things, it doesn't work. We try again, it doesn't work. We try something else, finally it works. Right. It's not like playing golf. No. <laughs> Thankfully, and it, and I'm we, really bad at golf. Yeah, and we get back, at, you know, they hit that one good shot, and we think, okay, this brings me back tomorrow. I think same thing with software development. Right. So it's a question of understanding I'm not intelligent developer. I'm a developer who tries hard. Mm -hmm. I'm a developer who can be smart, who works at his craft. That's a more robust self story, right? Yeah, so that you yeah. can take a failure, you can take a piece of critique, and it doesn't hit as hard, right? Now, I know um, this is a lot of stuff, but your workshop actually covers eight hours, and you have Legos. Can you kind of reduce, what, how do the Legos fit into this? <laughs> so the Legos are kind of a little uh, a hack to, I mean, it is at a conference, people don't know each other. Um, the Legos are a way to build something, and then you're partnered up with somebody else, and then you offer each other feedback about the Legos themselves. Ah. So it's something kind of safe, kind of um, separate from you yeah. that you can offer feedback on that isn't going to cause us, you know, that somebody isn't going to offer, you know, have a storm or emotional storm about the Legos until I start messing with the attendees, which is kind of the point of the workshop. I'm messing with the instructions they get to generate certain emotional responses. I'm actually fairly open about, you know, what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, and it's not hard to look at it when. I'm giving you very specific instructions about something, and then suddenly the person who's offering you feedback is offering feedback about the very thing I told you to do. <laughs> it's not, it's pretty obvious so what's you, going on. So you're playing the bad guy here. Yeah, but I want them to feel that, those triggers. I want them to feel that experience of what it's like in the wild. 
to feel that feeling so they're ready for it. Okay. So in the moment when they receive a thing, they go, oh, okay, I know how this is. I know what this is. Mm. I just have to do this to get around it. Or I just need to go take some time. Right? Got it. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the Legos are just a tangible object, so you have something to point to and give feedback on. Yeah. Something that's outside of the, themselves. Well, it's also fun to play with Legos for a while. Uh, yeah, who doesn't <laughs> like Legos? Uh, unless you step on them in the middle of the night in your bare feet, of course. That's true. <laughs> uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? I don't think so. I mean, I know that... Feedback's hard, right? Yeah. It's certainly not a thing that uh, you can just be good at out of the gate. It takes effort, right. effort and understanding and, and empathy, really. Yeah. That's the key is understand, being able to put yourself in that person's shoes and go, well, okay, how, no, if I know this about feedback, I know this about how the brain kind of responds, how are they going to respond if I do this? Right. Uh, you've done this workshop a bunch of times in the past, right? Yeah, I've done it a fair number. Every time it gets a little better because every time I take a little feedback from the audience, um, which is fascinating. Are They're, you scheduled to do it again in the future? Not yet. Okay. Actually, that's a lie. I'm doing it at work um, okay. in the upcoming in a couple of months. We haven't quite fixed the date. But, Where do you work? Uh, I work at a company called Aperture, not Aperture, but Aperture, uh -huh. A V I T U R E, in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. We do a software consulting firm that I've been there coming up on eight years in March. So congratulations. Thank you. Arthur, thanks so much. Thank you. Feedback is one of the most important life skills you can master. Not only does it allow you to do better things with your work with technology, but it allows you to have better relationships with your family and friends.